Hey, this is Gene with Motoclops, and today we're going to do the unboxing of the 2024 RFN Aries Rally Pro DLX. First, we're going to use our wire clippers, um, cut the bands here. and then we're gonna slide the top off. Next, we're going to get this uh, upper cage off and, uh, and cut the ties for some of the parts that are fixed to the top of the frame. So the first one here is gonna be the front tire. And we'll just set this tire off to the side here so we can use it later. We'll cut these. All right. <clears throat> then we're gonna use our, uh, our drill with a Phillips head and our 10 millimeter wrench. And we're going to go around the base of the packaging and undo all of the bolts here. I want to make sure that all the screws are out so it doesn't hang up on there. There we go. And we're just going to slide that into the box. We'll get as much of the packing material off as we can. <clears throat> Put that in our bin. Some zip ties up here near the handlebars. And the front fender is zip tied to the rear tire here. Remove that. And we'll put that off to the side as well. Next, we're going to release the front forks. Uh, this will allow us to get the bike lifted and onto a bike stand. So we're going to take the 12 millimeter. Oh, I'm sorry, the 10 millimeter <clears throat> on top and then the 12 millimeter on bottom and get those off. Make sure that there's no other ties keeping the bike from lifting off of this, the crate. And then we're ready to get it onto a stand. So now with the bike on a stand, uh, we can remove the crate out of the way. But first we're gonna take the, some of the assembly parts and the charger off of the crate and put them off to the side. So next we're gonna get the front wheel on. So we're gonna grab the front wheel that we removed before. And in the white box that's provided inside of the crate, it does have a lot of the assembly parts. The boxes are well marked. And in the box that's labeled tools, you're gonna see the wheel spacers in there. The orientation of the wheel spacers are going to be the longer one will be on the disc side and the shorter one will be on the non-disc side. The axle is uh, still held on with the pinch bolts on the forks. So we're gonna take a five millimeter and we're going to loosen the pinch bolts. The axle caps are held on with eight millimeter 
uh, axle caps, so we're going to remove those. To assist in the removal of the axle, typically I will uh, undo about three quarters of the threads and just do a light tap to start that axle coming out. And then the axle will come out pretty easily after that. Next, I'm going to remove the rest of the packing material from the forks. And we're going to get the front wheel on. Be careful in getting the spacers inside of the forks. It can be a little tricky. The, uh, the fork shoes uh, need to be spaced in a way to where you can more easily slide the axle through. Might take a couple of tries. <clears throat> and then get the axle nut on there. We're not really going to tighten everything to uh, torque specs until we get the caliper on, which we're gonna do a little bit later. All right, we're gonna move to the handlebars now. So we're going to cut all of the rubber bands and remove the packing material that is on the handlebars. I would also go ahead and cut the zip tie that's holding the front brake together. That's gonna to be important here in a few minutes, as well as the keys. So my advice is to cut the keys off of the handlebar and just maybe put them in the, uh, with the other parts that you're gonna be using for assembly. Now that we've got the packing material off of the handlebars, we're gonna go ahead and loosen the uh, handlebar clamps and uh, get the handlebars mounted in the position that we uh, want them to be. So I've got my light impact with a 10 millimeter socket and we're going to get these mounting screws. When you put the handlebars in their position, make sure that all of the wires are free from the bar clamp. That's gonna be very important. Uh, the, uh, any squashed wires can create shorts, so electrical shorts. You're also gonna see two crosses that are alignment markers on the handlebars. Just make sure that those are even across the handlebars and place them in the uh, angle that you'd like. Uh, this is typically the angle that we set them to. And then we will put bar clamp one and bar clamp two on. I do an initial hand tight just to get the threads going. Double check your alignment your bar angle, and then go ahead and get it down. The torque spec for the bar clamps is approximately 25 to 30 Newton meters. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna set the torque wrench to about 27 Newton meters and torque to spec. To the best of your ability, make sure that there is a similar gap between the lower bar clamp and the upper bar clamp. Right here, I'm looking that it's approximately two millimeters on both sides and approximately two millimeters here as well. Not an exact science, but just do your best to try and keep them uh, even. All right, now that the bars are on, we're gonna move on to the headlight. So front fetter and the headlight go on uh, at the same time. 
You wanna cut the front caliper free. We're going to install that a little bit later. Uh, just go ahead and bring that down closer to the caliper mount and we'll leave that in place. Some of the mounting hardware is going to be in the uh, black boxes that are inside the main white box. So you wanna look around and make sure that you get the correct uh, hardware. In the plastic parts as well, so there's gonna be three boxes inside, uh, tools, assembly parts, and plastic parts. We've got our side shrouds here as we hunt and peck for the appropriate hardware. So for the front fender, we've got a uh, four millimeter screw uh, that <clears throat> helps cinch the fender, which then also helps uh, adhere the headlight. So don't lose the washer. Once you get those threads started, you can get your four millimeter and your small ratchet and go ahead and cinch that down. Now to get the headlight on, you'll notice that the, uh, there's a plastic shroud uh, right behind the display. That fits over the uh, keyed ignition. And then there are holes underneath the headlight that the uh, the posts on the front fender uh, slide into. So you might have to put a little bit of force into that to get it snapped onto there. And then you are good. I wanna make sure that we don't pinch any wires in the process. You know, you always want to continue to double check your brake wires all electrical wires to make sure that nothing gets pinched. There are these large zip ties that are included in the white box. Uh, you want to slide those through and this is how the headlight clamps to the fork tubes. You want to slide those out of the way uh, and behind the fork tubes. <clears throat> and do the same on the other side. Great, now let's get the front caliper on. The uh, caliper bolts are a five millimeter, so you wanna make sure you have those removed. Right, so, <clears throat> The uh, caliper is ship, uh, shipped with a stopper in between the brake pads. So you wanna make sure that you remove that. Slide the caliper over the disc and then get the caliper bolts threaded back in. Now, I hand tight these to make sure that the caliper can still move around because what we wanna do is we want to align the caliper to the rotor. What that means is that we wanna make sure that even though the caliper can move around, we want to lock the caliper in to where it has the best contact with the rotor as possible. So the way that we do that is I will take some uh, weight off of the front wheel and spin it while pumping the front brake. Once you get at least one rotation around, you wanna hold that front brake and you wanna tighten the bottom caliper bolt first and then the top one. And this will dramatically increase your chances of having the best pad contact with the front disc. And now we're going to secure the brake cable to the, uh, the 
cable clamp here. This is a four millimeter Allen with a 10 millimeter nut. We're gonna loosen these. What I like to do is to get this, uh, this enlarged uh, portion of the uh, cable down right below the clamp. It's a good reference point for uh, the location. It can be a little tricky. You almost need three hands to hold the cable guide in place while also tightening everything. Great. Now let's go ahead and uh, take the uh, torque spec for the front axle and pinch bolts and get that buttoned up. And then that way our front end is complete. So we like to uh, torque the front axle to approximately 35 to 40 Newton meters. Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna put a little bit of blue thread locker uh, on that axle cap. This is definitely a best practice for uh, the axle cap. Uh, you know, blue thread locker will keep it uh, or minimize the risk of it rattling out. Um, I'm always amazed how many of these things will just pop out, you know, wiggle loose. So we'll get that in there. <clears throat> and <coughs> we will set this to approximately 35 Newton meters. The uh, pinch bolts, we torque to uh, approximately 10 to 12 Newton meters. So we're gonna do those now. Now it's very important to torque these in the, uh, uh, in the order that I'm laying out here. Reason is there are two. So what happens is you can get one to where it will click out, but because there's one right next to it, then it means that the other one will compress the fork shoe and then relieve some of the pressure from the other one. So you wanna go back and forth. So back and make sure that each of them click out the same without moving. We're gonna do the other side here. As a side note, this is also true for your lower triples that also have two. Very important. We see that a lot um, you know, for uh, customers that work on their own bike. Uh, they can uh, sometimes just torque it um, to where it just clicks once, each bolt, and, uh, and then they rattle loose. So I'm just going back and forth and back and forth. Great. And now we've got the front end done and we're going to move to the rear suspension. So before we uh, mount the rear suspension, uh, we do want to remove the kickstand. It is zip tied to the rear swing arm. So let's go ahead and cut off those zip ties there and just slide the kickstand out the way. We're gonna put this off to the side because we're gonna do the kickstand a little bit later. Now you'll notice that the linkage and the bottom of the shock all have zip ties in there. There's a reason for that. Um, there's a lot of uh, spacers that need to stay together with the shock. And it's important 
that you um, that you don't lose those uh, spacers. So my advice is to just get some of the zip ties cut, just making note that you have some other <clears throat> zip ties that you don't necessarily want to um, undo until you're ready to mount everything. So uh, this first one that we're going to do is the, um, I guess people call them dog bones. Um, and to be able to completely free those, you just want to make sure that you get um, enough space so they can move down. So on your bike stand, you may need to roll the bike backwards a little bit. <laughs> there we go. And then that way, these can drop down and you can see the bottom of the, um, of the shock and the shock mount. So we will take our wrench here. And this is the lower shock bolt. You want to do that first. That is critical. And you want to remove the bolt because it is adhered to the bottom of the, um, of the linkage. And then there is a zip tie. And these are, these are the guys, these are the spacers that love to try and run away from you. <clears throat> They're very thin and uh, fairly loose, so I would I I continue to keep my fingers on them, and I'm just lining up the bottom of the shock to the linkage and bringing the bolt through and connecting the two. get that nice and tight. Um, there's not an exact uh, torque spec because this is a lock nut that's on there. So just get that nice and tight um, and uh, move on to the next. So we're going to, for the, uh, for the dog bones here, hmm. You want to remove uh, that nut and the other side sometimes will spin. So you want to take a, uh, a 12 millimeter here <clears throat> and hold on to that other side. All right, we're going to slide these up to their position, you might have to move the bike around or elevate the rear tire to line up the linkage bolt here. I'm going to come in from the right side. Ooh. Now, notice how this popped out. So, this can sometimes happen. Not to fear. You just fit it over the bolt, and this is just a, uh, a spacer <clears throat> that goes back into the bike. All right, get that realigned. Perfect. And slide your other dog bone over, and then Push the bolt through and get it tightened down. Again, not an exact torque spec. You want to get it nice and tight though, because there is a lock nut on here. 
So next we're gonna put the foot pegs on. In your box of parts, you've got your two foot peg mounts. You do wanna make sure that you put them on the correct side. Uh, and so the post faces inward and you wanna make sure that the peg flexes uh, backwards and upwards, okay? Not <laughs> forward and upward, bad. So we're going to put this one on first. And we're gonna grab our 14 millimeter. As a general practice, we do like to put these in the fourth position. Uh, what I recommend that you do is go ahead and put it in the third or the fourth position, ride the bike, spend some time on the bike, and there's a reason why there's six positions, and that's so you can adjust it to how it feels better for you. Um, just as a general practice, we typically put it in the fourth position. There are these silver dowels here that will fit into these dowel holes. Um, those are more for alignment and stability. And you want it to where the foot peg is nice and flat. And when you wiggle it, you'll, you'll feel that the dowel is inside of the dowel hole. We don't have a torque spec for this. I like to call it the German torque spec, which is guten tight. So just get a little muscle in there and tighten it up. We're gonna do the same for the right side. All right. With those on, we're going to move to the kickstand. So the kickstand bolt is a 17 millimeter. It does come with the kickstand bolt installed into the swing arm. So we do want to remove that and be careful because um, there are two washers that are also held on with this bolt and they can very easily drop. So the smaller one stays with the head of the bolt. The thin one, the extra goopy one, goes in between the kickstand and the swing arm. So you do want to align this really well because there's a sleeve on the bolt that needs to fit inside of that inner washer. So what I did is I made sure that the washer was aligned with the hole as perfect as you can get it. Otherwise it compromises the integrity of the washer. You wanna put as much force as you can on this guy. You don't wanna snap it. No ugga duggas, nothing like that. Just some nice good strength on there and then test its mobility. Nice. All right, now let's get the spring on. <clears throat> we do have what is called a spring tool. Uh, that is what I'm gonna show you uh, in this video. Um, there's a lot of other creative ways of getting that spring on, but we're gonna use our spring tool. Shaped like a T, it's got a hook on it. What we do is we will reach through here and use all the strength that you can muster to get it up onto there. And now it's on.
All right, so we're now going to put the side flares on. And uh, in order to do that, we need to take the battery out. Now what we're gonna do is get these uh, side panels on, but first we've gotta remove the seat and remove the battery. There's a wing nut uh, right underneath the seat. That you wanna unwind. Right there. This is also a great opportunity if you are uh, going to be PDIing the uh, bike at the same time. Go ahead and remove its hairnet and just tilt the seat up against the handlebars. There is a uh, chrome handle on the right hand side, right in front of the battery. You want to release it and that helps lift that and then the plastic battery cover comes off. The battery does ship with the uh, battery uh, power and BMS disconnected. So <clears throat> what you want to do or what I like to do is to hold um, that clamp, grab the handle and just give a little bit of a tug and the battery comes out. We'll just put it down right here. Now, in our white box, we've got the side panels. We're gonna put the right one on first. What I like to do is there is a hook and a hole. So hook goes in hole. So we've got these two holes uh, on the inside of the frame. You're gonna take your uh, three millimeter single bolt without the washer. We're gonna put it through that hole and just do a little bit of threading in. We don't want to create too much tension. We just wanna get it in because we've gotta move uh, this around in order to line it up. Okay, and then you take your uh, four millimeter bolt and you put it through here. You can move the, the seat just a little bit to create some room to get the hole through or to get the bolt through the hole. Sometimes it will uh, restrict, the seat can restrict the uh, fairing. So one of the neat things about the RFN is that the seat can come completely off. So these pins pull out. And the seat can come completely off. We've got our four millimeter. <clears throat> We can line up the holes a wee bit better. And then we've got our nut right here. That is a 10 millimeter nut. So we'll take our 10 millimeter wrench and we will get this nice and tight. And then we'll take our three millimeter and go ahead and cinch down that first one that we did. Now, these brass threaded inserts are just pressed into this plastic, so don't give it too much tension. No torque spec there, but just get it to where it doesn't feel like you're pulling the threads out. And then we're gonna do the same on the left side. Great, so now we're going to do the uh, left shroud. So again, hook into hole. I'm gonna get our first screw in there. 
Ah! Scream in terror when it falls. As I mentioned on the other side, you just want to get some of the threads started. So it makes it a lot easier to do this upper one. So this upper one is the, uh, the four and the 10 millimeter nut. Not too tight. Bam. All right. So let's get the battery back in and uh, test it out, see if it runs. Sometimes the rear brake cable can get in the way of the battery. I'm gonna snap the battery back in. Ooh, you wanna hook the battery up. So this is very important. You wanna connect the power first, okay? and then make sure that you press the green tab in to lock it. The reason for that is when you connect the BMS port, if the key is on or some other ignition is on, the BMS is what tells the battery to fire up. And if it's fired up and then you plug the power wire in, um, that could be bad. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure the ignition is off, Best practices is to connect the power first and then the BMS and then vice versa. When you want to remove the battery, you want to make sure the ignition is off. The BMS comes off first and then the power. Okay. So now with that in place, let me go here. Press in the latch and get our seat back on. Let me get the holes lined up here. Proving to be more challenging. Great. Pins are in, and then wing nut underneath the seat. And get that nice and tight. Okay. Let's see if she turns on. So key in, ignition on. The screen will show uh, blank, pull both levers in, and we are ready.